Well, it wasn't a smooth process, um, not by any means. Uh, the mental health system, I think, in a lot of ways, uh, makes it really difficult to get people help with unless you um, you get police involved a lot of the times. If they're displaying signs that are aggressive or something that's making you uncomfortable uh, and you try to drop them off the hospital, they'll usually just let them go. So a lot of the times we had to wait to a point where he was getting really aggressive or really angry or, or really upset and calling the police and having them escort him to the hospital, you know? So it's never, it was never under terms that were um, that pleasant, especially in the first, um, I'd say first five years were like the most challenging. Well, the voices um, subsided for a long time, a long time um, with the clozapine. But uh, recently, maybe about a, uh, like two or three months ago, I had a bit of a relapse. And uh, the voices came in even stronger than ever, you know, and just scarier than I've ever experienced. You know what I mean? It's just, it's very scary when you have voices like telling you to kill yourself or kill other people or you're never going to make it or how are you going to kill yourself, you know? It's really scary when you hear those voices. It does seem completely bleak when you're going through it. There's absolutely no doubt about that. It took Jesse probably a year and a half to two years to have any insight whatsoever. He, his standard response, even once he started to get a little bit better was, oh no, I'm just going through a bad patch, it'll be fine. As soon as he acknowledged that there was something wrong and then everybody could kind of really work together on it, including a psychiatrist, it, it really made a huge difference. I think it was harder for my immediate family and friends around me than, than it was for me actually going through schizophrenia. It was very, very hard for my father. And eventually when I came out of it, uh, I started talking to him again. and. He said to me that it, he felt like his long lost son had returned to him. So it was very emotional for him. And now uh, we get along really well. Like my folks, myself, my sister, my close friends, we, we have a really, really good relationship now. Our experience was essentially good. But that has a lot to do with the fact that I already understood the system and also, when it came to having a, a hearing about whether or not Jesse was going to be remaining at the Clark, obviously, as a lawyer, I was in a lot better shape than a lot of parents would be. Families from other origins, um, and by, by meaning maybe different cultures, different languages, um, different understandings of, of even mental health and what that is. Uh, right now, I would say that's a gap in our services particularly in respect to languages. Both my parents being immigrants, um, it was really hard for them to understand schizophrenia and, and what that meant uh, and what, what that entailed. Like my father for a long time was kind of in denial of the whole thing. But um, now that I think everybody's at a point where they understand and they are accommodating and, and supportive. One of the, one of the very interesting things with schizophrenia is that its uh, distribution is worldwide. There is no society in the world that uh, is uh, free uh, from the occurrence of schizophrenia. Even though many of those societies are really quite different in terms of their uh, uh, development and uh, culture, etc. I think that, you know, as a society, more and more we are beginning to be more serious about mental illness, trying to understand it, and we're realizing the, the breadth of the impact it has. I mean, mental illness in one way or another will touch every single one of us. We also need to remember, like any other illness, some people don't do well, and we have a responsibility to support those folks as well. A major part of what I see is my job is, is helping people have hope and having people see this, this is a transition, this is maybe a possibility for change um, and it's not a death sentence, it's maybe it's a, it's a chance to have a new direction um, and maybe 
better, more communication in the family about what's going on. Recovery, I think, is restoring your hopes and your dreams. It's seeing yourself as not just part, just not an illness. You're just not schizophrenia. You're not just psychosis. You're other things. You're maybe, you may be a brother or a sister. You may be an artist. Um, you may be a, a singer. You may be a mathematician. You may be anything. And it's helping people to realize that they have different, different parts of themselves and helping encourage them to bring those parts out and not having the diagnosis being the overall definition and end all and be all of who that person is. One of the roles the Schizophrenia Society of Ontario has to play and will always play is to change the way that people think about this illness and to make sure we have the facts and to make sure that we understand this because one in 100 people are affected by schizophrenia. Those are huge numbers. I've certainly changed from when I said it was a death sentence and then I said it was a life sentence, definitely. Um, I still, Jesse, I feel, I feel badly because I think Jesse is missing a big chunk of his life. Um, but yes, I mean, he has, he has, um, minor deficits now, but you know, he's great. I'm going to continue on with the peer support. Uh, I want to get my black belt. I have a brown belt right now, so I want to get my black belt. Um, I would like to travel to India and Japan. Um, I'd like to have a family in the future, you know. A lot of people with mental illnesses worry about having kids because their illness might be passed down. But I figure that uh, if I can deal with it, hopefully my children will be able to deal with it as well if they, if they have uh, schizophrenia. What I would say to families that have a, a family member going through this is that you know, the person can get back on track, right? Just be patient, be caring, be loving, and, you know, your family member, your loved one, could very well make a recovery and get back to a normal life. As a society, we need to become better informed because it's not only the Schizophrenia Society of Ontario that's going to affect change, but all of us need to take some responsibility and need to fear this illness less and understand it more. Thank you.